This section is called Talking Points for the big races of the week at the Cheltenham Festival to be done in the company of Daryl Jacob, David Ord and Graham Cunningham. Gentlemen, let's start with the champion hurdle and start with you, Daryl. You're riding in the race. Let's pretend you're riding in the race. How a tactic's going to play out? How do you go about getting Honeysuckle beat? Oh, so that's going to be tough. Uh, it's going to be very tough to, um, to beat her. I mean, she's... She's a wonderful mare. I mean, she's very, very adaptable, isn't she? She can make the run and she can, she can sit in second, third. She, she can ride him from behind. So it's going to be very, very difficult um, to get her beaten. Um, she seems to uh, show a really good turn of foot, doesn't she? At the back of the second last, you've seen it at Leperstown, you've seen it at Cheltenham last year. She's got this amazing turn of foot and she seem, that's where she seems to, to go into turbo, doesn't she? She gets clear of her rivals and then, you know, she's got them and she has the momentum to, 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 to hold them off as well, hasn't she? I hope she wins. I really, really do. I just want her and Rachel to have their moment in front of that great sporting amphitheatre. And yet, and you know this with Willie Mullins on Sporting Life, the confidence behind Appreciated is strong, isn't it? It's getting infectious, isn't it? It started a couple of months ago when they, they were first pointing him there. And by the passing week, both him and Patrick are getting more than more bullish. David Casey was when we were there last week filming that, that, that this horse is absolutely spot on now. I think Davil's nailed it. I think that bit between the second last and the last, and GC will come on to this, is the crucial part of the champion hurdle. And I think if Honeysuckle hasn't burnt off Appreciate It by that stage, I think we could be in for one heck of a fight up the hill. But when you see Appreciate It in the Supreme last year, mm. I don't know how strong you thought that field was, but it was certainly impressive. We absolutely demolished them. And it's almost two furlongs, Darren, isn't it? From, yeah. from, from two out to one out, 25 seconds, and this is where the overdrive, the turbo kicks in. But Appreciate It did something similar to Good Novices last year. And... It's not Honeysuckle's fault, Ed, that she hasn't met superstars. Uh, Shushkin went chasing, Bob Ollinger went chasing, but it's come, take no long while, but we might have found the horse to reveal what Honeysuckle's ceiling is. I mean, that was Blue Lord in second. I mean, he's, he just got his favourite for the arc, yeah. hasn't he, this year? And he's, like you say, he had, he had him well and truly beaten um, going down to the last. And that Mullins record with horses on a long layoff at the it's festival. Unbelievable. Ten Hill, Arctic Fire, um, Annie Quivega. Power. Yeah, yeah. Quivega six times, you know. Um, so you have to think that y you go on vibes at this time of year when you haven't seen a horse for a long while. They dominated the Dublin Racing Festival, Mullins and Townend. And yet at the end of the weekend, uh, Paul Townend was going to Patrick Mullins and saying, I can't wait to have a crack at Honeysuckle with the big horse. So. Which builds it up beautifully. Seven to two, well, play or, or pass, well, it, it's a skinny enough price. It, it is, but it was five to one, it was an obvious play, wasn't it? Seven to two would begin to get to the point where you think, well, that's probably about right. I think about the absence, I'm much happier backing a horse off the back of a year's absence than having its second run back after a year's absence within two or three weeks. They're much more likely to hit a peak number first time back with a good trainer. Seven to two might look a big price if Willie wins the first two races on Tuesday. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Tommy's Oscar runs well. I, I can I, see I it. love the Hamiltons. I just love the fact the Hamiltons are going up against the powerhouses of Elliot and Mullins. It's a great story, isn't it? I, I can see him running well. Uh, he's he's never been to Cheltenham. He's never been at that level, but he's got a high cruising speed. He jumps beautifully. He jumps really quickly, and um, you know the, there are gongs for second, third, and fourth here. Uh, Oscars, if you will, and Tommy's Oscar might be able to collect one of those. Oh, that would be great. Just finally on this, Audi, as racing editor at The Sporting Life, where will it stand if she wins, if Honeysuckle wins? I always argue with Ruby. I say the, the cupboard is bare. She's great, but the cupboard is bare. He disagrees completely. He says she scared them off and she's just exceptional. Will she be an all-time great if she wins the champion hurdle again? I'm with you. It's a weak division that she's reigning at the minute. When people talked about... After Leopard Sound, she's better than Dawn Run. Dawn Run beat Wayward Lad in a Gold Cup. She won a champion hurdle, went up to three miles, beat Crack three miles in a Gold Cup. That's something that's never been done before. We've had unbeaten champion hurdles before. We've had multiple champion hurdles before. But this string of ones, the connection she's got. If she wins another champion hurdle, then yeah, she's, she's, one, of, she's one of the great jumping mares if she wins another champion hurdle. The champion chase, Daryl. Sir Anthony McCoy always says this is his favourite race of the week. What's it like to ride in? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, there's, there's no better thrill for a jockey to, um, to be going out there and, and the speeds that they, that they hit um, going down the back straight. Um, the tempo just keeps building and building and um, every jump you get to is crucial. You just can't make any little mistakes, can knock you out of your rhythm, can knock you back. And it's, it's all about jumping at speed and like the thrill and adrenaline is just but magic. The, but you've hit the nail on the head here, haven't you? If you're backing the horse at a very short price in a champion chase, the margin for error 
particularly in the jumping stakes, he's, he's very, very small, isn't he? Yeah, it? exactly. Like you say, and I think that's what Shiskin done really well. He made a couple of really, really bad uh, mistakes around um, Ascot, and he still got back up um, and, he, and he beat an ergamy. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just a great thrill, I promise you. You know, it's high speed, you know, high action, and uh, it's a race that I, I, I love riding in, I really do. This is what you've got to ask yourself, four to six, Shishkin, and you look back to history and you think, Koto Star, world chief, masterminded, sizing Europe, Defi de Soy, two to five, Duvan, two to nine, Chacon Passoir, eight to 13 yeah. last year. Yeah. It is, uh, Daryl's right, it's a gunslinger division. You miss for half a second, someone will take advantage. And, Audi, it's beautifully set up, isn't it? But we're treading on eggshells a bit. We've got excited about the champion chase in the last few years, and then it's all gone awry, hasn't it, in the last 24 and 48 yeah. hours? And this is the race of the week. Cannot wait for this, because we've got this rematch, hopefully, between Shishkin and Ergamine from Ascot. I mean, there's a spot where starved of these sort of big matchups. They avoid each other all year, occasionally meet up. They met at Ascot, and they served up an absolute classic, an absolute treat. I mean, Shishkin... How important is this, watching this, that Shishkin's been to Cheltenham and done it? That's the one question that Ergamine's got to answer. That Shishkin has been here... I mean, he was a brilliant winner of the Spartan Life Arca last year. And then he took his phone to another level in that Clarence house. He eyeballed an Ergamine and got to him in the last... Four or five strides. He wasn't going to win that race at any other stage apart from four or five strides after the last fence. And that's the thing in the back of my mind. If this is a speed test, I keep looking at this weather forecast. I don't know if John Ketley's bespoke ones are showing something they met off his arm. I don't see these heavy bands of rain coming in. If this is good to soft ground, but bordering on good ground, I can't wait to see an Ergamine winging away around there. If it's <laughs> this is how good this race is. We've got the 2020 winner, Politic Log, in. We've got last year's winner, Put the Kettle On, and they're out with the oh, being mentioned. Massive prices, and, yeah. and no one's expecting them to get within Kui of Shishkin and, and Ergamine, and maybe Chakun as well. Wh which camp are you in, Greg? Cause it's it's fascinating. In the build-up for it, just the Irish camp first. One minute we were being told an Ergamine's the best horse in the Willie Mullins yard, full stop. Yep. And then you hear Willie, it, who we hear a lot from on Sporting Life, saying, oh, Shakun's brilliant, Shakun's yeah. the best. Yeah, well, my, my, I tried to take myself five minutes after the race, Ed, and think, if an Ergamine's won this at four to one or nine to two, and I haven't had a few quid on, I'd kick myself all the way home. Because Just explain why. Because he's that much behind Shishkin on form. They both produce the personal best uh, at Ascot, and there's that much between them, and it's a greater test of speed. Now, he hasn't been to Cheltenham, and I'm interested to get Darrell's view on this. To my mind, an Ergamine has to get out quick and get that inside rail, try and boss the inside, because he can adjust a little to the right if he's in the centre of a fence. Yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting, because he obviously jumps a little bit right. Um, Shiskin, actually, funny enough, jumps a little bit left. But what Shiskin is... If you if you if you look at down through his races, he prefers to lead on his near four, which is his his, his near side, his left leg, rather than his off four, um, and that indicates that he's more of a left footer than a right footer, um, and he will actually be better going left-handed rather than right-handed. Um, and but the form is, is a lot of his most of his forms have been around Kempton and and, and Ascot right-handed tracks, but I think there's more improvement to come when he gets onto his favourite. Um, near side leg and he can dominate and he can lead on that he's a lot more accurate when he's leading with that and I think there's more to come from Shiskin and Chak and Passois, who knows down the line then who wins the champion chase I'm going to go for Shiskin the bet is an ergamine I hope he gets there safe and sound he's not had a trouble free build up apparently but I think he's a crackerjack horse and I think he could be hard to beg back an ergamine <laughs> He's got inside your head, you know that. <laughs> He's got inside <laughs> your head. This morning, talk, it's talk about getting inside the head. The, the stayers hurdle is, is, I mean, my head can't get round it. And what I ask you, Daryl, how difficult it is at Cheltenham. Firstly, flooring porters and classical dream to a certain extent have got to deal with crowds back. Mm. Then we're down at the start as a jockey. What are you doing? Are you looking at the starter when he's starting to get on his rostrum, getting ready to go? Because you've got those two going for the start. We've also got the worry of what's Paisley Park going to do? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting actually because obviously Paisley Park is, they used to take their time on him a bit, bit you know, a few years ago, the, but now they've been riding him more forward than... But they've got know, to get him to start. Well, I know that, but that's, the thing about it is as, as a jockey, you're going to be, if you're lining up, if Paisley Park is sort of in or around you, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be cautious too because if he does drop the leg and whip around, he could actually take you with him. So a lot of the jockeys are going to be down at the start now, they're going to be worried about Paisley Park, what's he going to do? Is he going to jump off or is he going to go left or going to go right? 
and then maybe take you out of the race as well. And will Aiden want to get in amongst horses? Yeah, Aiden will try and, you know, I would imagine, I mean, if I was riding Paisley Park, what I would try and do is I would try getting buried in around horses so he's not looking at the flag. Because it's, it's amazing, some horses are so clever. They, they, they see the flag coming out and they'll go, they'll jump. And other horses, I mean, you see some of the standing tape starts and stuff like that. They see the flag going down they see, and they just literally plant themselves and stop. Whereas I'd imagine what Aiden will try and do, get me in amongst them. So Paisley Park's not going to see the tapes going back and not going to see the flag. So he's kind of concentrating on the horses that are around him. And then that will hopefully jump him, him to jump off to be a smooth jump. But he wouldn't want to be given, you know what I mean, Florin Porter and, and Kesper Dream an easy lead out in front. He's going to have to track him because Paisley Park is a horse that is slightly behind the bridle nowadays rather you know before in his younger days he used to travel a lot better but he is a horse that travels slightly behind the bridle and he's an Aiden's not one to go and want to give them six seven eight nine lengths at the start because he won't catch them back not like in the cleave hurdle and the cameramen are gonna have to be briefed aren't they GC yeah to keep an eye on a number of things down at the start here it's a cast of complex characters I'm, I'm <laughs> it is I'm concerned about flooring Porter uh, back with 50 or 60 thousand Herberts ho hooting and hollering classical dream Two big performances behind closed doors. Crowds came back at Goran. He got stewed up, didn't perform. I've gradually come round to Time Hill. He's been quietly backed for seven or eight days now, and he is sitting on a peak performance. He's the right age. He's got the high quality form, ties in very closely with the likes of Paisley Park, etc. And he doesn't have those complications. However, the race is run, he if should go well. His complication, when you, you, you hear jockeys talking about him, and AP and Ruby always said, in the stairs heard, you want a horse racing behind the bridle. They always say about Time Hill, he's just a little bit too keen, mm. just a little bit on edge. Do you think he's relaxed enough now? I, I do. I do, yeah. I think. He, I think I think he'll be at his very best next week and I can find reasons for worrying about the other three at the top of the market and I can't really find too many too many concerns I, about I, I love that horse I mean I think he's, he's very yeah he's very very consistent he's he's the whole way through his career he's been consistent I thought he was very good at Aintree last year mm. when he won with Tom O'Brien just taking over from Dickey and um, like you say I know it didn't go to plan out or toy but you know his last run um, you know, I think it was a very, very solid run, and like you say, he's he's guaranteed he's, he will turn up and he will run his true race. Whereas, like you say, there is question marks about the rest of them. Champs the horse who just beat him mm. at Ascot before Christmas, and we may be neglecting him a little bit. I so it's a puzzle. I, I think Champs bang in the mix. I think if you watch that classical dream flowing party race at Christmas, which was so controversial, the one thing they can't control is what classical dream is going to do at the start, because he's Devil's mentioned the horse is at sense of flag coming down. He pinged it that day. They wanted it to be false start, the Flying Porter team, because he anticipated it and gone before, uh, gone beyond recall before it started. They, they don't know what he's going to do. Like with Dave Ord in the 50 metre dash Exactly the same. <laughs> but I'll tell you, they ran him the next time to, to get him to settle in behind horses. Because mm. they had that thought that we don't want to do this to champ uh, stay zone unnecessarily. We're not going to million miles with Floyd, I'd rather sit second to him. He settled for Patrick at Punchestown in his younger days. He, he rode him dead that day, he was stone cold came through and won. He hasn't looked that horse, at the, and it does worry me, that atmosphere. And I think Champ is becoming the forgotten horse here. No place for ageism at the Cheltenham no. Festival. Ten. But Champ is 10, Paisley Park is 10. No 10-year-old has ever won the Stairs Hurdle. Mind you, Big Bucks would have been 10 when he got injured just before, and I think he might have won it. <laughs> just about, wouldn't he, yeah. <laughs> it, the interesting thing about Champ is, like, I mean, I've been associated with, with Nicky for, for many years now, and and there's no better trainer that you want on your side than having a good horse being prime for, for Cheltenham Festival is Nicky Henderson. Mm -hmm. He's an absolute genius at it. I thought the horse looked a little bit tubby um, at Ascot yeah. or at uh, Cheltenham the last time he ran. And, and I can tell you, Nicky will have him 100% yeah. yeah. spot on for the day. And I think you'll see a better horse at Cheltenham. It's, it's a bizarre than, thing to than, say. Than what you will at, in the Cleve Hurdle. I think he'll beat Paisley Park, even though... Paisley Park mm. nearly refused and still won, yeah. but I, I think if in that match I'd go for champ from the 10-year-olds. Are we ready after that puzzle to solve the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup puzzle? Daryl, you're going to go first here. I'm your agent, as I've always wanted to be. Thanks. <laughs> who, do you wanna, who would you want to ride? Of course, it's very open, isn't it? Um, and again, I'm probably going for consistency, a horse that you know, has never been out with the first three. Um, is at Blue Tard. I thought he ran a great race um, last year in the race. Um, he beat obviously Bristol in the, the Betfair chase, didn't he? Looked very, very good up that way. I know he got turned over um, at Dublin the last time, um, but Henry's horses were somewhere a little bit in and out. I think he can, um, I think he can turn the tables there again. Um, I think he's just a, a really nice, 
likeable horse that'll go out there and wears his heart on his sleeve and he gives you everything. He's a nice jumper. He's why, a good well, traveller. Why, when you look at last year's Gold Cup, why should he turn that round with Melinda Endo? Well, it's just, uh, well, Melinda Endo, again, sort of still needs to come back and do it again, doesn't he? Um, I don't know. I just, there's something, I just think if Henry's horses get really sparkling, I think there's, like you say, the consistency of them. Um, they might try to do a few things different in their camp, but, you know, he's, he's not been beaten far. I've been album photos back in third I mean he's you know, he's a very very consistent horse in, in a very very open Gold Cup I think that's the key now that finish there the one two three in last year's Gold Cup we're now looking at horses to step up I mean there's question marks about Manila in though he's not been within stones of that see I since. disagree with that because he went to the Irish Gold Cup before he won the Gold Cup and was fourth of five yeah, Chel Cheltenham brings him to life there is that element there's still I, I thought this year it still wasn't great it wasn't as good as last year do you not think? No, I don't. I, th I thought that they thought there was a bit more spark, and there might be. Cheltenham is his place. He might come to life. Back-to-back -back Gold Cup winners are rare. They tend to be yeah, but if, horses that get beaten a Gold Cup. They don't come back, back to win a Gold yeah, Cup. Yeah, it's well, even rarer, yeah, so. yeah. Having won one, and to come back and win it. To the, after the album photos, trying to follow Cartel Sat. This is a division where we've missed the the rising star. We lost Monkfish before Ball had been kicked in anger this season. He's the one that's missing. The last year's star novice that was going to come forward but has anything made a convincing case to you from outside last year's three that they're ready to come forward Galvin he has I think he has does that answer your question yeah, yeah. it does perfectly, perfectly <laughs> Galvin answers. win and I was chased up a Perth one year uh, I remember he, he yeah. was certainly one thing he won a maiden hurdle at air one day yeah, yeah. his progression I mean, he's been, been incredibly well yeah, trained yeah. you've yeah. got to get, take your hat off to Gordon Elliott there I mean what a, what a trained performance yeah. for him to, to you know what I mean from going like no disrespect to air and to, you know what I mean from Perth and stuff like that, winning he's novice chase, novice hurdles, to all of a sudden being in line. He has been, been one a, of the favourites. A, a to, slow to burner, but he's very close to the match with A. Plutard based on Leopardstown. I think the ground could be a very key component. A. Plutard is a fast stayer. He's really got a high cruising speed. Galvin is not slow, but he's a very strong stayer. So I think keep an eye on the weather. Um, it looks an Irish benefit. Fergie, protector up, maybe. That would be a big story for the for the uh, sports, general sports media, but I'm not saying the Irish are taking it for granted that they're gonna win another Gold Cup, but they have created a brand new bank holiday for Gold Cup. <laughs> so I think the bars in Ireland will be doing pretty good business. I think want to throw Tornado Flyer into this, because I think if you look at the King, if you didn't know the backstory of Tornado Flyer, and watch that King George, he's won a furious gallop, he's traveled like a dream through it, gone through, stayed on nicely, won away, you thought, well, that's well worth the chance. A Gold Cup. It, it, there was nothing in that run at Kempton that suggested, why wouldn't you roll the dice? And I think they're bringing him fresh. Willie said he's never had him better, as you would expect him to say. But I think of all the horses that have been un missed in the market a little bit, I think Tornado Fly at Kempton has been underestimated and undervalued that performance. Uh, um, yeah, but that King, I thought that, I must admit, like, I, do, I do rate you, I do think he's a very, very good horse. But I think when you watch back the, the King George, I think there was... It was a funny race. They went fast. I mean, obviously, they didn't want Brindy to get an easy lead. You know, so Rachel took him on. And I just thought, like, in the, the King George, it looked to me from, like, being sat home watching from an injured, there's so many j jockeys that were under such strict orders in that race. The only actually jockeys that actually went out and rode with a sort of a, a free mind was the two Willie Mullins' as jockeys. They were told, obviously, you know, get yourself into a nice they rhythm. They were told to pick, right, up, pick up the pieces. Ride later, the they? race as yep. you find the race. And they were the two that came home in the end that, you know, they played out the finish. I know, obviously, Brian's horse obviously fell at the last, but you could, I could just, watching it, you could see the, the riding instructions, what jockeys were given to do what, to take on, you know, obviously. And to you follow know, on It was from a really that. interesting race actually to watch from a jockey's point of view. It was actually a very, very interesting race to watch. To follow on from that, this year's Gold Cup might not be quite the, the, the punishing contest mm -hmm. it is. We've normally had Native River coming out swinging from round one. This year we don't have Native River and we don't have too many really aggressive front runners. You clearly still have to stay very well, but it, it could be more one for the stalkers, which would probably suit A Plutard. The Gold Cup winner will be? I'm going to go for A Plutard. Tornado flyer. Wow. I'm going to go for Davy Russell and Galvin. I think he might just outstay. What him. a story that is with yeah. Davy Russell. I mean, he's, he's a beautiful rider. Well, I know he always has been, mm. but to come back for an injury like that, you know, and ride. I mean, I was over at the Dublin Racing Festival, and, you know, the rides that he gave some of them horses were just absolute poetry. Well, they were did beautiful. You change to the watch. subject slightly. Beautiful to watch. That, um, Johnny Henderson Grand Annual. Tell us what it's like to ride in that. Russell's record in that race 
when you get a million miles an hour and he can just creep and creep and creep. Alan Carberry. He's like one, two, three, four, one, three, five. He's always in the mix in that race. Gentlemen, Series rider. Thank you very much indeed. So looking forward to the week and we've got loads of content and previews for you on Sporting Life. <laughs>